Hi, this is Seamless, and today I'm going to talk about a particular kind of uh, bass and chord combo that um, I've decided to do for this track I'm working on currently. Uh, if my voice sounds a little distorted, it's because I'm pushing the uh, limiting really hard. Yep, there it is. The sort, distort, distort, ah, ah, okay. Anyway, um, I'm going to play a bit of the track, and then I'll start explaining how to bass. So, uh, the main thing that I, I'm, I'm doing in this track is, is actually two harmer, harmers doing this. It's one that's just a bass, and another that's some chords. And together, they are Captain Planet. So, um, what's happening... Primary, let's, let's, look, let's look at the actual bass for a second. This one is fairly normal sounding, but I accomplished something in, a, in an interesting way. So, um... One of the parameters that you can mess with is the units of pitch thickness, which controls directly this slider here. So uh, why is this important is because I like the sound that if I were to just turn this off, see that sounds kind of ridiculous, but if I were to, if I were to bring it down really quick after I hit the note, you see that it it becomes separated as, as a result of the pitch differences uh, in the setting of uh, unison. But if I kept it all the way down while I played, it would just be the normal, uh, not pitched variety. And I want to have that difference. So what I do is in the envelope, just a normal envelope, it just goes straight down. And the reason why it sounds different all the time is because uh, of, the, of the unison. It's different when it goes in like that. Up and, up and down a whole bunch of times. Uh, anywho, um, so that keeps that that keeps that pitched variety in the tone, but it's not so wildly out of out of pitch that it's like a non tonal sound. But we get the nice metallic kind of uh, grime. Also distortion, lots of distortion, and some limiting. But most of this is uh, distortion. That's a tiny bit of prism engage, but that. But really, the crux of the sound is the hertz and the distortion. I also have B on, which is just a normal uh, uh, saw wave. I'm using to reinforce the uh, the solidness of the sound, so that's not too crazy. It also helps to keep bass in line. Uh, but that's also going through the A, A, and B both go through just the one effects uh, thing. So they're both being distorted by the same distortion. Now the chord. What's going on here is actually being uh, is actually utilizing the uh, harmonizer in Harmer. What the harmonizer does is it uh, takes you see you see look at the look at the visualizer actually you can see what's going on. It takes it uh, clones and transposes the uh, harmonics of the that you play normally. And then moves them around. And then it moves them around based on what you set here. Now this is actually the, the default settings because what this, what, this, what this is doing is just moving it up an octave or two octaves. Might be two octaves. That's not the chords. So it might just be one octave. I'm at 100% uh, just because I feel like this particular interface is a little confusing. But um, the manual does a good enough job of explaining how this works. But uh, the this. Also, you can offset by uh, this here changes the uh, um, by octave, and here changes by steps. So you can like do a different kind of harmony than just octave. You can do like a actual like a major or minor or some kind of sus sus suspended like raised fifths. 
that kind of thing. You can do all kinds of, you, you can, you can do that with this setup. This is, I'm not hundred percent on how I haven't really tried, but to get the sound, it's not, not terribly important. Um, what the strength knob here does is it changes where the emphasis is in the, on uh, uh, which harmonics that are being copied. So when it's all the way down, it's strength is on the lower harmonics. When it's all the way up, strength is on the higher harmonics. The width um, determines which section of the harmonics are being copied. So if I keep it down all the way here, only the lower harmonics are being copied and put on top. But if I make it huge, then all the harmonics are being copied and the stacking is creating the, uh, the, the influence, the different influence in harmonics there. The amount, the amount uh, clearly determines the amplitude of the, of the harmony. I'm also distorting it slightly using soft saturation distortion, which is a very light distortion in, in comparison to most distort distortions. So there's a little bit of distortion going on also in the uh, master, but that's not whole, wholly relevant. And so together, they fit pretty well. Um, I'm also doing a some little, little bit of EQ, nothing too, nothing too dramatic, just to taste on each of these. I'm taking out the, taking out the bass, but there's not a lot of bass in there anyway, as you can see. Um, I have a filter on it because I do filter stuff to it in the, in the track, but uh, in just normal playing, the filters are all the way up, so they're not affecting the sound. Uh, okay, also, um, the kind of sound that you get depends on the sort of chords that you play. So I'm going to give you a tiny, a little tiny bit of a... Uh, um, theory lesson for a second. I'm gonna go to the big, the big chord, big chord pattern. This one. Play. So, um, the kind of play that the harmonics are having in the distortion is determined by what, um, chords and the, and key is you're playing in. Now, the key, oh, the nature, I guess, I forget what it's called, whether it's major or minor, that kind of thing. Um, so right now I'm in the key of E and this chord is an inverted E minor chord. The five is on the bottom, so that's a second inversion. I don't really know, but it's an E minor chord. The difference is not really all, all that pronounced because of the nature of the harmonizer, because there's these three notes are basically being uh, transposed up. And so it's like everywhere. You could theoretically do this without the harmonizer, just by copying and pasting, but that could be a lot of uh, note work later on. So that's minor. This is major. Now, if I were to only do one and five, which is this is one, one being the root note, five being the fifth in the note, which is not to say that it's five steps. It's actually seven steps because there's twelve steps in a in a scale, but there's only eight. Uh, Power? I forget. Man, it's been a while since I've used terminology. Uh, but this is eight like steps in a scale. There's eight notes in a scale, but just 12 steps. And the fifth of the scale is seven steps. And a third is three steps. And a major third is four steps. But um, you see, if I, were to, if I were to do only the one and the five, that kind of, that thickness is gone because it's, it's too many sympathetic um to, uh, harmonics going on in there so there's not there's not as much for the uh distortion to kind of screw with so if i were to put this back to so uh Make sure, make sure you you experiment with different chord groupings when you're doing this sort of sound, because doing just a note to me anyway doesn't sound as as sufficient as that, and that's and kind of important. Uh, you, you may notice in looking at this um, this project here that there's not it's not as busy as my usual projects. There's not a lot of, it's not as many as much automation going on. Um, the main bass that I'm, I'm, I'm using here uh, just has this filter modulation going on. That's a filter engaged before uh, the distortion, 
and uh, it's route it to X, which quick, quick map to X, like I have here, and then I just modulate that. There's one A and B. Uh, boy, I sound weird when I'm sick. Um, what else? Um, I also want to talk about, I mean, I'm going to cover this more in depth when I do the making up for this track when I release it. I don't even know what I'm calling this track yet. I don't have a name for it. I hate making names. I'm bad at names. But there's a sound that I made that I'm pretty proud of. Anyway, that is a live harmer just by itself. There's no resampling. There's no FM. There's some FM going on in the other bases, obviously, but in this one, this is just. And this is taking advantage of techniques that I've already talked about, actually, in uh, the last couple of how to bases. This is the har har harmonic unison pitch uh, windows, primarily, which are doing the magic. This being where you could determine what harmonics are having the. Um, unison pitch difference applied to and by how much so this is not just volume we're talking about this is also like this is higher pitch than down here and then over here and that can create ridiculous ridiculous sounds so that's what i'm doing here that's why like this is working out pretty well um, i'll talk more about that in the making of if you don't get what you need to get out of that from the previous how to bases which do talk about that enough to make that sound uh the the um FM bases that are happening. I decided to experiment with uh, frequency splitting. Um, this is FM using citrus. And if you've managed to never ever see any of my videos, then you've managed to not know how to deal with this. Um, I have, I recommend you look at How to Base 6, which talks about um, FM synthesis from the ground up, which is what it's called, and it uses citrus. Uh, if you have FM8, the principles are still the same, so you should be able to get enough out of that. But I also decided to experiment with frequency splitting. Um, the mixer here. What I'm doing is I'm using a Maximus channel and I'm just muting everything but the individual bands for each of the channels so that they're perfectly split. And uh, on, I'm also using in each Maximi the uh, uh, soft saturation to induce distortion, <laughs> as you see here. Now, uh, that's that's creating that's what's creating most of the weird kind of sounds is going on there's also a little bit of reverb and that's going there's reverb, reverb before this frequency splitting which is interesting because it means that the distortion is being applied on the reverb in different stages um again i'll go on more specifics about that it's pretty specific already honestly because it's because like the bait like i haven't done this kind of bass like the like this stuff yet because i really i really felt like it was too obvious but i gotta admit it sounds really cool when it works like I was kind of surprised how cool that sounded. Um, obvious inspiration being like Dead Mouse. Um, this one track by Overwork actually was a pretty decent um, like study for this sound, but it wasn't. It's was a little bit not hard enough. Also, the, also the Dead Mouse Dead Mouse stuff in general is not hard enough for my tastes, as you can tell by the epic distortion going out of my voice in the master because I'm driving everything to the limit. Walk along the razor's edge. Anyway, this track should be done pretty soon. Um, it's, it more or less is done. I'm just kind of working out the kinks and some of the sections sound terrible, but uh, I don't know what they call it yet. And when it's done, it'll be available on Black Octopus Sound, just like the others. I'll do the making of, and it'll be good. Um, there's a preview up on my SoundCloud. I'll link it in the description. And uh, you can listen to that a whole bunch of times. If you like it, let me know. Follow me on Facebook because I I have if you follow if you have been following me on Facebook you would have found about this a long time ago and by a long time ago I think I mean yesterday. Uh, let's check the uh, how long have I been working on this track? Fourteen hours. So it's like started on 10, 11, 10. Uh, reverse date reverse date format. Uh, so two days ago, 
and then I made I made uh, the this the B part of the drop, and I posted that up on my Facebook for as a preview, and on my SoundCloud. So if you had followed me on my SoundCloud and my Facebook, you would have known about this. Just saying, social networking, man, it's a thing. So yeah, um, if you have any questions, ask me. Uh, the actual main concept of this video being the uh, harmonizer bass combo. It's really kind of straightforward. Like, um, one of the reasons why this works out so well is the 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 kind of like the harmonic type that comes out of the space. It kind of gives it that weird piano we organ sound, and uh, that's what you want to go for. In fact, most people I have heard like directly just sampled pianos, and what they do is that they uh, take out the attack and they just use the mid the sustained piano tone, and they use that as their uh, uh, as a layer in this kind of in this kind of style that works out very well. It does it does the job pretty good. And if you're at all curious about that, Harmer has piano um, presets which uh, actually have piano samples loaded in the uh, image section, so you can experiment with that. It's actually also what I did for um, not bass antics. It's a song that I never released, so you wouldn't know about it. Never mind. Um, yeah, anything else to say? Thanks for watching. You're the best. You're the coolest. All of you are so cool. I love you. Goodbye.